Hello guys, uh, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology screencast. I'm simply doing the screencast in preparation for tomorrow as I've had some concern and the first session I did today on the 10 mark question session and um, there was a real kind of kind of problem area and the problem areas were to do with these memory hooks and making sure you understood how they worked in relation to cardiovascular adaptations to exercise and how it prevents coronary heart disease. So if I just said to you quickly now I'm just going to go through each one with you. Basically it's a number association so what we have is uh, we have the five numbers okay and basically those numbers go two four six six eight if they are even okay they are based around cardiovascular adaptations if they're odd they're based around respiratory so starting off there number two and the key focus behind them is you have a, num a set of numbers the numbers will rhyme with a word have an association from that you chain until you get an answer so number two okay follows the following pattern I'm going to say it then I'll put it onto the screen so number two rhymes with soup Kind of. And that soup is going to turn into supermarket. The supermarket you're going to uh, imagine is Lidl. And if I abbreviated Lidl, it would be Aldi Al. And if you thought about the supermarkets, uh, Aldi Al's in Worcester, there's quite a few, there's hardly any of them. So basically what I'd like to say is how you're going to link that is there's a decrease in low-density lipoproteins. And the reason why is because there's an increase in high-density lipoproteins which act as scavengers and chip away at the artery wall. Now this directly affects coronary heart disease because it prevents the build-up of fatty deposits or um, Aldi Al's and it prevents atherosclerosis. Okay, so atherosclerosis, remember, build up of fatty deposits around the artery wall. So if I put that onto the chain, okay, make sure you can link it to atherosclerosis because it stops that kind of uh, lumen size um, becoming too small. Going down, the number four. So you're basically going to rhyme that with reward. Reward, you're going to think about as a trophy. So when you get a trophy, okay, you get excited. Some people might say hyper. So what you think there is hypertrophy. And of course, because we're talking about the cardiovascular system, the key muscle that hypertrophies or gets bigger is cardiac hypertrophy. Now, this can be tricky in how you link it to coronary heart disease. The way you need to be doing it is thinking, right, once you've got the link and the, and the hook, you're then saying, right, key focus here is if you increase cardiac hypertrophy that increases your pumping capacity if you increase your pumping capacity that means that you kind of um you increase your stroke volume and cardiac output yes but how does that link to coronary heart disease well it links to it because in order to increase your stroke volume and cardiac output it means that you're kind of um blood vessels or arteries have to open and close or vasodilate and vasoconstrict and because of this constant vasodilation it reduces the elasticity and if it reduces the elasticity because they're constantly moving that then prevents the kind of direct link to arteriosclerosis which is the hardening of the artery or coronary artery wall okay so that's number four i'll put it onto the screen now make sure you can link it to coronary heart disease number six then number six okay is basically looking at anorexic okay so when you think of anorexic you think of thin okay what you're going to think of now is is thin in terms of the blood so blood will thin now you will not get a mark in the exam for saying blood thin or thinning of blood so what we have to do is understand the term that it like kind of refers to reduce resistance to flow so basically because the blood thins, this is known as a decreased blood viscosity. So viscosity, the resistance to flow. So basically there's a reduced resistance to blood flowing around the kind of uh, cardiovascular system. Therefore, how does that link to coronary heart disease? Well, it links to it because it prevents the uh, onset of blood clots and f or also it prevents, um, therefore, a heart attack, myocardial infarction, if you do biology, or uh, angina. Okay, so that's that one done. So basically... Uh, sorry, that's come from, from forward. So if you look at that one, I've gone there. So basically, you're looking there, number six, flicks. I mean, to imagine a flick knife. Flick knife, if that stabs someone, that's going to cause blood. If the blood is blood, well, blood is red. Red blood cells increase as a result of, of um, exercise. This is mainly a performance benefit. However, you can loosely link it. It doesn't really make sense, but you just got to hope that, um, you know, they'll give you a tick for it anyway. There is an increased red blood cell production of a result of long-term physical activity um, so what you can talk about there is this allows more oxygenated blood now really it allows it to the muscles but if you want to just say and hope they fall for it and say that you know there's an increased uh, amount of oxygenated blood that uh, reaches the heart muscle or the myocardium you could do that okay final one then number eight that is going to rhyme with mate mate if you're talking about a mate in terms of someone you work with a workmate it might be a peer okay so peer a peer 
can be said to apply something to you if they want you to do what you want to do e.g. your friends smoke and they say smoke you'll be really cool this is an example of peer pressure now what I need you to do then is think of the word associated with cardiovascular system and coronary heart disease that is linked to pressure that word is blood pressure so basically you've gone from a mate mate peer peer pressure pressure turns into blood pressure now as a result of taking part in kind of uh, physical activity what will happen is you'll have a reduced resting blood pressure okay and it will be to a healthy value if you want to put some technical detail there which would be 120 over 80 mmhg now this also helps prevent the onset of hypertension okay which is um where consistent blood pressure is consistently high and permanent okay and, and a value that would dictate this would be 140 over 90 mmhg now if you have a uh, blood vessel or uh, as high blood pressure sorry this is a key risk factor to coronary heart disease arterio atherosclerosis um, uh, which will then obviously affect the fact that you're more likely to have uh, angina and a heart attack so there are your key adaptations okay that's how i want you to remember them if if so for tomorrow at least you'll have an idea of what you're doing for those um i have had also had some problems um with students i haven't taught on gaseous exchange okay so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go out of this uh, PowerPoint slide now and just quickly go through. You can have a look. Um, I'll pause it for a sec. Hello guys, uh, yeah, so I just swapped over onto this screencast. The gaseous exchange question was also causing people some problems. So basically then, uh, what we have to look at, um, I've put here like the kind of, I use like the kind of uh, acronym of GASP-DD. Now the reason why I use this is kind of, you know, in the following way. So basically tomorrow we're going to have a look at how gaseous exchange changes at the, or gaseous exchange at the alveolar muscle tissue and how it compare, how it changes from rest to exercise. It gives us quite a lot of information to, 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 to write, it isn't as long as you think, as long as you have a, a protocol or a kind of methodology by which you're going to approach it. So if we look at it first of all, the reason why you use GASP-DD is this. For every time you talk about it, I mean, certainly for the start, your introduction to your um, kind of uh, essay on this will be, what gas is asked about? Now, if this question is asked gaseous exchange, basically it's talking about both gases and then the area. So we always know that the area will be in the question, so alveoli or muscle, and the alveoli works on the blood and the blood works on the muscle. So there's one of the two sides. So you have to talk about alveoli or muscle and they will always work with blood so that's your first thing they're thinking questions you don't actually write those in your essay then when you're looking at this we start off by saying right the first thing you talk about any diffusion diffusion proposes the rule of diffusion proposes that special rule is not a real thing that's just something i put in there to make gasp dd okay so the rule of diffusion proposes that gases move from an area of high partial pressure to low partial pressure high concentration to low concentration so then you start off and we'll be saying right what you have to do then is look at the partial pressures. Now, because you breathe in first through the alveoli, you know there's a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, and there's a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Now, this directly causes an ox oxygen diffusion gradient because there's a high and a low. And because we know this rule, it means that oxygen diffuses from the alveoli to blood. Now, if you flip that round, we then talk about carbon dioxide. We don't need to talk about special rule again. We've already talked about that once. We just then straight go in and talk about the fact that... Um, there is a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood, a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli, because we talk about the opposites. This causes a CO2 diffusion gradient, therefore uh, CO2 diffuses from the blood to the alveoli. Make sense? Then, what you've done that, you might then talk about at the alveoli. So once you've done that, I would suggest what we could look at tomorrow is our plan's going to be to move a okay, case and then say, however, during exercise, and remember for exercise, we have to exaggerate. We don't need to talk about one, two, three, G, A, S. We've already talked about that. That still happens. We just then need to talk about here now how it changes. So we're saying, however, during exercise, gaseous exchange at the alveoli, between the alveoli and the blood tissue, there is a higher partial pressure because we're exaggerating now it's exercise there's a higher ppo2 in the alveoli and a lower ppo2 in the blood this causes a steeper diffusion gradient and therefore faster diffusion takes place for oxygen from the alveoli to blood and vice versa for carbon dioxide now how you structure that if you want to do both gases together here uh, when you're talking about partial pressures and diffusion gradients you can that's completely up to you um, but that's what i'm looking for so you're basically saying this is your start point you always thought with this you might do this as an introduction so first point is that 
then you go down to um, oxygen and carbon dioxide at rest then you go to here however then you talk about how partial pressure becomes higher of the same gas and then compare it then we'll go down to uh, muscle tissue at rest which is just exactly the same as this concept G A S P D D but then remember muscle tissue joint exercise is where we talk about Dr. Taco when we've done Dr. Taco we talk about the effect of altitude on initial effects of altitude on um, oxygen diffusion and we can talk about their um, hypoxic conditions and I'll talk through that tomorrow. Okay, thank you.